There we go. Whoa. Oh, look at that fish. Yes. What's going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen. And this is going to be a little bit of a different video. Yes, it's about the Texas rig. But I want to dive into everything that I know and every different way to fish a Texas rig. Because it catches them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's dive in and have some fun. All right, so first of all, this is I'm getting towards the end of the day and I've got a lot to cover. So this is probably gonna be a two day video. So I won't be wearing the same thing tomorrow, I promise. I tell you, the Texas rig is the one rig that I recommend that anybody who's starting off should learn first. And any experienced angler should still be fishing it. It is that good of a rig and it is that versatile and it can do just about anything. And that's kind of what I want to talk about is the different things you can do with a Texas rig that, um, that make it that versatile and that just make it a tool that you always want to have tied on. So let's talk about rods real quick. Rods, it just depends on the technique, really. You can go from a heavy action rod, this is a medium heavy or medium heavy power or a heavy power rod, uh, depends on your cover, depends on the size fish you're, you're, you're um, you're fishing for especially depends on like the the um the gauge of the wire so i love these gamagatsu hooks and i just made a perfect cast and i'm gonna reel it all the way in just to show you guys the hook but i love these gamagatsu hooks especially in a kayak because they are a thinner wire hook but they are stiff like a, a thicker wire hook so i can get i can get by with fishing a heavy a heavy power rod or a medium heavy and really setting hook setting the hook really hard and not have to worry about bending the hook out now if i'm going to a finesse technique something like a spinning rod putting a, a little bullet weight in front of the a, a one odd or two odd worm hook then i'm going to go with a very very light wire because a lot of times your rod and your line are just not strong enough to get that hook set if it's a heavier wire hook and so play around with those with those uh thickness of wires because it really can make a difference it really does and if you're if you're getting to the point where like you're setting the hook on a fish and you're getting the fish up to the surface and then he just opens his mouth and that bait just comes popping out you got a couple of issues one it could be too weak of a rod two it could be too weak of a hook set put your man pants on set the hook or three your um the gauge of your of your hook is too stiff for one and two that's are too big for one and two so that's kind of what you gotta what you gotta handle very very seldom will a fish clamp down so hard that you can't get a hook set on a texas rig i've had it do it on like a a chatterbait because the blade gets stuck and you can't set the hook in, in, inside the fish's mouth because they're taking it deep and they're clamping hard but very very seldom do i have to worry about that with a texas rig all right so first of all let's talk about the components i almost always peg my texas rig when i have it set up like this that's not always a good thing <laughs> but i fish a lot of cover i fish a lot of places they can get snagged ultimately to get the most action out of whatever soft plastic you're using you don't want to peg it you want that hook or that sinker to slide freely on the line and that gives you the maximum amount of of action out of your worm it also keeps the bass you get those finicky bass that can feel that weight and they'll blow the you know they'll blow the the uh, the bait back out of their mouth if they feel that weight it's just a lot better off if you don't peg it the times i do peg it is when i know i'm fishing snaggy cover what's good about a texas rig is it's virtually snagless when it's rigged right and um and so it's it's not as frustrating for beginners and so on and so forth it's just a really really good thing now the sinker really it just depends on the technique i'm going to go through some techniques here in just a minute and talk about that but what i like to see in somebody's tackle box and what i have in my tackle box is everything from an eighth ounce all the way up to a half ounce in most tackle boxes and that covers just about anything you want to do my favorite cut uh, weight the weight that i throw the most is a 3 8 ounce that's always what i start with i know the fall rate i know a lot about it i just it feels right to me a half ounce always feels a little bit heavy uh, <clears throat> when i fish it on a medium heavy rod now the hooks let me get some out of my tackle box real quick 
these hooks again it just depends on the technique my favorite texas rig hook is the gamagatsu g finesse uh flipping hook it's a lighter wire hook let me get it a little bit closer there you go it's a lighter wire hook it's a straight shank and I prefer straight shanks most of the time, unless I'm fishing really, really fat plastics. And then I go to a Gamagatsu EWG, one of the OGs. This is a small one, but I get these hooks, both the both the straight shanked and the uh, the EWGs, the extra wide gap hooks. I get them in three aught, four aught, and a few in five aught, but mostly three and four aught is what I use. I use a two aught on a uh, on a trick worm or a finesse worm and something like that. So I'll have a little bit of a two watt. Now, really that's the only two type of hooks that you really need for a Texas rig. And where a straight shank hook is, is uh, the best is in grass because you don't have that bend in the hook to get snagged in the grass. I just use it for everything just because I get a lot more positive hook set with it. And so I always recommend a straight shank. Now, as I'm going along with this video, if, uh, if, I, if I mention anything that I've covered in another video, I'll link the video down in the description. I'll also put it up here in the little cards, and you'll be able to uh, be able to look those up and go watch those videos, like how to put a hook in a worm and uh, other Texas rig videos and other, um, other techniques that I'm about to talk about. Now, the first technique that I want to talk about is a swimming worm. And when I say swimming worm, like a zoom speed worm or a, a cutter worm from uh, from Strike King, a cut tail worm from Gama, or uh, uh, Gary uh, Yamamoto, that kind of stuff. Something that when you swim it through the water, it has a little tail in the back that just kicks. Now, the reason I love a swimming worm, it's a swimming worm is my absolute favorite to fish and cover water when I'm fishing really grassy water, like down in the south or up down in Florida and up up north. But what you do is you take a very very lightweight, like an eighth ounce or three sixteenths ounce uh, bullet sinker, put it up there, you know, put it up front. I like to peg it again. I'm in, I'm fishing a lot of grass and stuff like that, and I like to keep that weight close to the the close to the hook. But you don't have to but you throw it out and you just drag it through the uh the grass but you're swimming it as it pops through the grass you're swimming it out and it and it surprises a fish and you get you catch a ton of fish doing a swimming worm like i said i'll leave links up here on all the details to that other techniques dragging it's what i do all the time literally that's what i've been doing the last two days is taking a texas rig throwing it out and covering a lot of water i used to think that a texas rig was nothing but something you flipped to to bushes and flip the things you see i was more than wrong you know last year i caught a ton of giant fish just slow dragging a texas rig on on offshore structure and rock piles and stuff like that now another technique that i use an absolute a ton is i i like to swim it like you would a crankbait like uh for instance i was on kentucky lake years ago guiding a guy and we couldn't get bit for nothing and one time we were throwing rage bugs uh, striking rage bugs and flipping them up against the the bank and we were in kind of a steep bank and I started to wind it in and I was winding in pretty fast and I got hit boom and I'm like wait a minute let's try that and so I threw it in there's a creature bait you know it's got a lot of kick to it and I threw it up against the bank I let it sink a few feet and I just slowly reel it back like I would a crankbait and we just started to wreck them that is a great way especially with a creature bait with a lot of kick and you know a, a lot of of uh, uh, claws and tentacles and things like that that make a lot of action works great just throwing it out let it sink to the bottom and slowly reeling it back in like you would a crankbait uh best thing part of that is it's weedless so you can go and snagless so you can do that through bushes and stuff like that and not have to worry about it so another technique that i love to do especially when i'm fishing like drops or fishing offshore structure humps and and points is kind of what i'm doing right now is called stroking and what I do is I'll take a creature bait or I'll take a worm, whatever soft plastic I want to use, and I will uh, put a half ounce weight on it or even heavier, but usually just a half ounce weight. And I just hop it up off the bottom and I let it sink on a slack line. So I'm gonna reel up the slack, hop, and I'm jerking it up off the bottom and letting it fall straight down. It works best with a kind of a bulky bait um just because it gets their attention a little bit better but it'll work with just about anything so let me do that one more time you just throw it out and cast it out wind's blowing it's making it a little bit tough 
let it sink to the bottom and then pop it up and let it fall back down on the slack line. Now, another version of that is kind of yo-yoing and I do it on a tight line. I'll pull up and I'll keep my rod up and I'll let the bait fall back down. And what it does is the bait popped up and now it's falling towards you and, and gliding towards you. And it's kind of a hopping glide, I guess you could call it. But that works a lot too. But what I love about a Texas rig is how, how many different ways you can fish it and be effective. Now, for soft plastics, what baits do you throw on a Texas rig? <laughs> There's a short list of baits that you, or saw plastics that you don't throw on a Texas rig. And I can't think of one because I would put anything, a fluke, a, uh, a paddle tail minnow, anything on a, on a Texas rig. The biggest thing to remember is that um, with a hook. So any soft plastic that you use, you want to have enough gap when you put, when you put the hook in that worm, you want to have enough gap right here to be able to that if the bass bites it clamps down and there's plenty of room for that soft plastic let me put my rod down on that i need two hands plenty of room for that soft plastic to get in and get out of the way of the bass so you can get a hooks a good hook set that's my biggest mistake is i'll get lazy and, and like i'll go from here this to a tube and not change a hook out and i should have changed it to an ewg and i didn't and i and it's just a mess and I, i'm i'm so guilty of that so just make sure that you've got enough gap right here in that part of the hook to be able to do it now uh, another thing, you're fishing a lot of cover, you're fishing a lot of rough stuff. Be sure to retie often. I do. I tie, I retie after every two, every two fish, I retie after about a half hour of dragging through stuff and, and especially when I'm dragging rocks and stuff like that, I'm always checking the first four feet of my line to make sure I didn't get anything hung up. So like I said, a Texas rig is something that you totally have to start with and continue with the rest of your fishing life um just because you will catch a ton of fish on it and it's still no matter how old school it is it is still one of the best rigs out there for any soft plastic so like i always say be sure to introduce somebody to fishing introduce them to my channel let me help you teach them how to fish more importantly get out of the water go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day we'll see you